One of the most common models of group formation and performance that's found in business management and organizational behaviors textbooks is Bruce Tuckman's model of small group development. The late Professor Tuckman's model was first published in an article titled Developmental Sequence in Small Groups in the journal Psychological Bulletin in 1965. Now in this article Tuckman uh, proposed that small groups typically progress through four stages of development. One, testing and development, which is otherwise known as forming. Two, intergroup conflict or storming. Three, development of group cohesion, the norming stage. And finally, a stage where functional roles related well to each other, which he named the performing stage. Now, Tuckman pointed out that this model was based only on his data and further research was invited. Tuckman, with Mary Ann Jensen, would later revisit how researchers had engaged with the model and ended up adding a final stage, the adjourning stage. At the forming stage, the new members of a team uh, meet and agree on their objectives. At this stage, group members are oriented to familiarizing themselves with the tasks they're presented with and with each other. Now, all groups consist of individuals who have different understandings of the task in hand and how the group should work, so forming is often followed by a storming phase, where group members experience and work through conflicts and differing opinions about how the group should approach its work. Norming occurs when the team has learned to understand all members and they cohere around the goals of the group. Conflict has happened, perhaps has even become normal, normal, normal and the group agreed to move towards a clear objective goal. At the performing stage, they understand and the processes that are required to complete the group's project. Terminating a project happens when the group has reached the end of its life cycle. Depending on the group, they may require time uh, to prepare to wind down the group's activities. For example, therapy groups must conclude their work in a way that equips all participating members with the skills to continue when the group's work has been completed.